Amen. It's good to be in church tonight. Let's all stand, sing a song. Revive us again. 636 in your hymnal. Revive us again. Thanks for coming out this evening. Let's sing out together. 636. We praise thee, O God, for the Son of thy love, for Jesus who died and God does that in our hearts tonight, amen, and every day. It's good to be in church tonight. Brother Benjamin, can you open us in prayer? Thank you. Amen. All right, we're singing a few songs we haven't done in a while. 668 is Dare to Be a Daniel, 668. Any of you kids know this one? We're going to learn it tonight. All right, 668. If you know this one, sing out nice and loud. 668. Standing by a purpose true, heeding God's command. Honor them, the faithful few, all hail to Daniel's band. Dare to be a Daniel, dare. Stand alone, dare to have a purpose firm, dare to make it known. Many mighty men are lost, daring not to stand. Who for God had been a host by joining Daniel's band? Dare to be a Daniel, dare to stand alone, dare to have a purpose firm, dare to make it known. Many giants, great and tall, stalking through the land. And long to the earth would fall if met by Daniel's band. Dare to be a Daniel, dare to stand alone. Dare to have a purpose firm, dare to make it known. Hold the gospel better high, on to victory grand. Satan and his host defy and shout for Daniel's band. Dare to be a Daniel, dare to stand alone, dare to have a purpose, dare to stand alone. Amen. Who's never sang that song before? All right. Awesome. You're singing a new song tonight. All right. We're going to go to another one. Go over to 560 in your hymnal. We've got a couple choruses here. 560, and then we're going to turn over one page and sing the 563 right after that. Give thanks. Amen. 560. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. Oh. 
Sing and turn over one page to the right to 563. God is so good. 563. Sing and you may be seated tonight. Good evening. Thanks for coming out tonight and uh, worshiping, and hopefully learning and fellowshipping a bit this evening. Uh, a couple things. Wednesday, regular scheduled Master Club, 6:30. Any special activities this week? No special activities this week for mask. I mean, it's just special in general, but just not special activities. 6.30, prayer up here as well at 6.30, then at 7 o'clock, uh, Bible study. Started Proverbs last week, all right? So didn't get through chapter 31 yet. So we'll start where I left off, verse number 7. And I think we're only going to get about three verses this week, but... Uh, the goal is to to hammer away at Proverbs for a while, and it's it's a you know it's got a lot in there, and uh, but 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 you'll see that as we progress, uh, there'll be repetition, and we won't have to sp we won't have to spend as much time on it. We'll just say you remember all that from lesson number one, and everybody will go yes, we remember that, and so that's just how that goes. So Proverbs on Wednesday nights at seven o'clock. Uh, there's a teen Bible study. Uh, here at the church at 7 o'clock, and uh, there's usually some fellowship, some games, and a study. Uh, Brother Adam, Miss Heather will be taking care of that. They're sick today, or dealing with sickies, and uh, they'll be back, though. If you have any questions about that, you can text them, and I would encourage you parents to get your teens out for that 7 o'clock Friday night. Then our anniversary meeting begins next Sunday, the 13th, and it goes through the 15th. There are all the service times and, for the most part, break times and dinner times online at our website, postfallschurch.com. This little PDF you can download if you go there, and uh, you can see what's going on if you have any questions about that. If for some reason uh, you forget our website or whatever it is, just show up here at 1045 on Sunday, and Pastor Joe Camilleri is going to be preaching to us from the Old Paths Bible Baptist or Baptist Bible Church in Holly, New York and has a great testimony, and is a good preacher, and I think that he'll be a blessing and an encouragement to you, and in any case, if you'll come, you'll be in a blessing and encouragement to him, and uh, so I would encourage you to do that. That's on Sunday at 1045. It's just a good meeting. 
Um, I, I, I cannot promote it enough, to be honest with you guys. It's not just because it's our church. If I didn't think it was a good meeting, number one, I'd try to make it a good meeting. And then second of all, if it just was not good anymore, we'd quit it. And we've talked about that, but we're not quitting it. It's a good thing. It encourages several pastors, missionaries, evangelists, preachers, churches in the area. And uh, it would be, um, it'd be, wise, be wise for you to attend if you can. And uh, you say, I can't be at every service. That's just too much. Okay, that's fine. Be at as many as you can be at. And then, uh, and then one more. Okay? Just as many as you can be at, and then one more. All right? And so it, it'll be a blessing. Hardly any reruns. It's almost all new programming. And uh, it's just think of it that way. It's like world premiere videos and all that sort of stuff. If, I, I know most of you don't have a TV, but if you did, it'd be like that. All right? So that's uh, anniversary meeting, 13th through the 15th of October. We need help with cleaning, and there's a bunch of right. sign-ups in the back. There's, there's just a lot of slots available for all the good right. spots. And so if you could sign up for that, uh, that would be uh, great. One of my daughters told me this week that um, you know, one of her goals is she gonna, she's going to get a job, probably two part-time jobs. And, and then, but she's going to make sure they know right off the bat that I don't want to clean the bathrooms. Now, in fact, I'll take a dollar an hour less to not clean the bathrooms. And if I do have to clean the bathrooms, I want someone to clean them before I clean them. So I think that's a pretty good, I mean, that's a deal. I mean, I might consider hiring you never, but I mean, just think about that a little bit. And uh, there's a lot of jobs back there, and, and, and I encourage you to get involved. If you can help out with food, I think we still need some help with food. And uh, Miss Murphy can direct you in the right direction uh, for that. I think everything else uh, would just kind of put on hold. You can see it. It's, if you got a bulletin, if not, there's some more in the back there. And uh, grab those and uh, just follow what's going on. Otherwise, regular scheduled programming will be held at the regular scheduled times. All right? Let's have a rushers come at this time. We'll take an offering and goes to meet the needs around here. I encourage you, if you don't use the Push Pay app, download that thing and uh, you can give online. I, not just, I use it. You don't have to do it because I do it, but I use it. And it's just kind of nice. It just automatically um, uh, gives. Um, when I wake up in the morning on Sundays, it's already out and just helps me uh, to be faithful in, in that matter. All right. Elijah's going to pray and then we'll take the offering. Mm. Amen. <clears throat> And turn over to five or 679. 679, tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. 679. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just in him at his word. Just to rest upon his us to know the saints Just in simple. 
a Bible tonight. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter number one. Deuteronomy chapter one. One thing I love about our meeting is um, uh, the singing, because we already have good singing, but it goes to another level. And uh, I, I, you know, I, I, I appreciate Brother Thomas leading songs. I, I mean, I, when he's gone, I appreciate it even more. I mean, it just, I do, I just appreciate, appreciate him leading songs. I appreciate his uh, zeal and uh, picking out some new songs. And, and you know, we, don't, we, don't always like, we don't always like new. Everybody resists change to a degree, you know, or something, something a little different, right? And new, new songs, like ones that were written in the 1800s, those new songs. That's what I'm talking about, you know, just, just in case, you know, some of you, just whatever. And, and so I like that, appreciate that. I kind of push them out sometimes because I like to lead songs at the meetings. I feel like I'm, like I have this grand choir and I get to, you know, be the grand leader at that point. But man, it's just really if you if you haven't been to our meeting and that that's just a, as good of a reason to come as any. Maybe let my dad lead a song. That'd be that's always an entertaining um, uh, thing, and uh, you, that's that's always a blessing as well. He'll he'll be here and and look forward to that and. And we just got some, got some, got some good preachers coming. And um, I was get told Brother Dan here. I was get worried about this this time and who's coming and who's not coming, and start wanting to fork money out to hire people to come. And uh, that that's not always a good idea. We got some good preachers coming, and I, I want to encourage you again to be here for that. And I keep using this word encourage. That's my thought tonight. Encourage. And I use that often. I do. I try to. I try to use that often. I think one of the reasons when we assemble, one one thing that we do when we assemble, is we encourage one another. We we encourage. The, the Bible says in Hebrews in the, the verse that maybe we use, um, we we might use it a little too often. You know, in the sense of let's get together and we you know not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. I think that's a verse that you can use for assembling. I think, I think it is. I think that's one reason God gave it to us. But, but part of that is we are exhorting one another. Let us exhort one another. And uh, that, that's, that exhortation is a building up. That's what it is. It's to exhort, is to, is to build up. And that's, that's what encouragement has, that general idea as well. And, uh, in fact, encourage means to inspire, to inspire, or to inspire with hope and to inspire with courage. So if you're going to inspire, you're placing something, you're breathing something in. So you're breathing something into someone. So you're breathing hope into someone, you're breathing courage or confidence into someone. 
It has this simple meaning as well of just giving support, to give support. And in Deuteronomy, did I say Deuteronomy 1? Moses is going off the scene. Moses is the man of God who has been appointed by God to take the children of Israel now out of Egypt, but then into the promised land. And so they do that, and quite, quite the story in, in getting the children of it. well, quite the story in getting Moses to that position of leadership. If, if you haven't read it, you should read just, just read the first few chapters of Exodus. It's amazing. It's amazing. And uh, so, you know, at 80 years, Moses now becomes the leader of the children of Israel, and he, he, he gets them out of Egypt, and uh, tons of miracles there. And, uh, and then the children of Israel murmur, so they wander for 40 years. And, uh, you know, in that wandering, Moses transgresses the Lord, more, more than once, I'm sure, but one that we know of was he was supposed to speak to the rock and he smites the rock twice to get water for the children of Israel. And because of that, God says, all right, uh, I'm not going to let you go into the land. I'm not gonna let you, you're not going to cross Jordan. You're not going into Canaan. And Moses pleads with God that he might go in. God says, no, I'll let you see it, but I'm not going to let you go in. I'm not going to let you do that. But Joshua, by the way, who is Moses, this is a title that is designated to him, and call, he's called in the Bible, Moses Minister. That, that's, that's a, I mean, God says that about Joshua. That's quite a title. And it's not one that most seek, a minister. Minister is servant. The, the Son of Man came out to be ministered unto, but, uh, uh, to, but to, uh, to, to give his life a ransom for many. Is that what it, is that what it says? Son of Man came out speaking of Jesus Christ, and he's a servant, and, uh, and that's what J Joshua is, and Joshua is going to take the children of Israel now from this wandering, God says, you've compassed this mountain long enough, turn you northward, I think it is, and they're going to they're gonna now go into Canaan, and they're going to cross over Jordan, and, uh, and, and Joshua's going to take them in, so, so this is all what's going on here, and, and you get to De Deuteronomy chapter 1, and, and you look here at verse number 38, he says, God, God and Moses are having a conversation, but Joshua, Deuteronomy 138, but Joshua, the son of Nun, which standeth before thee, he shall go in thither, notice the words here, encourage him, for he shall cause Israel to inherit it. So, so God has given Moses a command to encourage Joshua. Now, and again, when we think about this, it, we kind of just think about it nonchalantly many times, but he, he's the higher up here, Moses is, and Joshua is the lower at this point. And while one might encourage someone inadvertently, it was more that the lower would encourage the higher. And Moses is going to take a little bit of a different position here and now he is going to encourage Joshua, and he's going to encourage him because, because God said so, and because he loves the children of Israel, to now take the children of Israel across Jordan. Now, the reason he's going to need courage is because the battle is going to be strong against him, and the enemies are going to be many, and in the minds of Israel, they're still like grasshoppers in the sight of all these whose land they're going to take. And it's going to take some courage. So God says, encourage him. Uh, look at a little bit further here to chapter number 3, Deuteronomy chapter number 3. And, and in Deuteronomy, you get all these. You, you just, you're having a chronicle of these travels. And uh, I'm just, I'm sorry, I got distracted by my notes here in, in the Bible, but but look what he says here in Deuteronomy chapter 3, and, and look at verse number uh, 25. 25. Moses is repeating his pleadings with God. He says, I pray thee, this is, this is God speaking to Moses, let me go over and see the good land that is beyond Jordan, that goodly mountain in Lebanon. Oh, I want to I go. But the Lord, I love what he says here. Uh, but the Lord was wroth with me, he's mad at me for your sakes little blame game going on here, right? 
But the Lord was wroth with me for your sakes and would not hear me. And the Lord said unto me, let it suffice thee, speak no more unto me of this matter. Now notice, get thee up into the top of Pisgah and lift up thine eyes westward and northward and southward and eastward and behold it with thine eyes, for thou shalt not go over this Jordan. We're not going to talk about this anymore. I'm going to let you see it. But here, here, here's what we're going to here's what, Let me give you this. Verse 28. Charge Joshua. And notice, and encourage him and strengthen him. For he shall go over before this people, and he shall cause them to inherit the land which thou shalt see. I'm going to remind you, you're not going to go in, but you're going to see it. So we abode in the valley over against Beth Peor. And I just want to talk to you a little bit this morning, or this evening, about encourage him. Encourage him. And let, let's pray. Father, thank you again. We can assemble tonight. Uh, Lord, we've already asked your blessing and we've, we've asked for your presence and we thank you, but we'll just do it again and we just want to thank you, Lord. You're just good. You're just amazing. Uh, you're, Lord, you're altogether lovely. We find no fault in you. And uh, we just want to say thank you again uh, for, for salvation in Christ Jesus that we can have eternal life. I want to thank you again for the abundant life that, that, Lord, you promise us as well or desire for us in the scriptures, and, uh, and Lord, that we would, we would yield to that. Lord, um, I thank you tonight for the mountain peaks, and Lord, I thank you for the valleys, and uh, Lord, we, we learn in both, but boy, it sure seems like we learn a lot more about you and probably about ourselves in that valley. And so, Lord, thank you. And, uh, Lord, wherever we might be in life, uh, Lord, I pray that we would we'd be encouraged, we'd take courage. Lord, the, the enemy is, is about his business. Uh, in fact, you said in your word he encourages in an evil matter. And uh, so, Lord, I pray that we would be encouraged in good matter, matter of the gospel the good works that you have called us and appointed for us to do. Well, thank you for that. And Lord, thank you for our children's ministry uh, labors downstairs, our nursery workers. Pray you'd help them. Thank you for these facilities. As we look to grow and build, we continue to pray for uh, discretion and discernment and provision. And we'll help, we ask for help there. And Lord, as we look forward to our meeting next week, we ask for just, uh, Lord, just something magnificent. Lord, you just, just do something wonderful. And we'll thank you for that. And Lord, I want to say again, thank you for loving us. We love you. Pray this in Jesus' name, believing. Amen. So, so encourage him. And to be certain, the, the, the child of God needs to learn how to encourage himself in the Lord as David did, okay? Now, I want you to, I want you to look over to, uh, I, want, I want you to look over to 1 Samuel chapter 30. I was going to keep you here, but look over to 1 Samuel chapter number 30. And, uh, and, and just a, a, a little thought here, because David was dealing with these distressed, indebted, and discontented people more than once. It wasn't just in the cave. And as he goes about his fleeings from Saul and, and deals with the, the men who are his mighty men. But mighty men complain. And mighty men get distressed and mighty men get in debt and mighty men get discouraged themselves. And, and when they do so many times, they, they don't choose out a Lord to complain, the Lord to complain to, or, but they choose out the leader. And this is seen all throughout the scriptures. And in those times, it is of utmost importance, that you learn to lean on the Lord himself. We all need that. Man, woman, and children, children, uh, who can understand alike, need to learn that. Look what he says here in 1 Samuel chapter number 30. And, and you, you can read the rest of the story, but just to, to, just to tell you there's trouble with David's people. And he says, and David, 1 Samuel 30 verse 6, and David was greatly distressed. Why? For the people spake of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But notice, but David, David encouraged himself in the Lord. David, David, David had learned 
uh, throughout his life on the hillside, his, his life in battle, his life now fleeing, his life in friendship, uh, he, he had learned how he could encourage himself in the Lord, how he could, we would say, put his own big boy pants on or pull up the bootstraps and go forward and charge on. And, and, and certainly some of it was, a, was his own willpower and, and God gifting him in that manner. But, but mostly it was looking to the heavens from whence David would say, my help cometh. David encouraged himself in the Lord. And every man, every, every child of God needs to learn, learn how to encourage themselves in the Lord. You need to learn that. But at the same time, every child of God needs to learn how to encourage him. Well, well who's him? It's just your neighbor. In the case of the scriptures here where we read in Deuteronomy chapter number one, he was certainly the leader. It was the man of God. There was Joshua who's going to lead the children of Israel uh, out into that Canaan land there against those enemies and the foes and that were going to face them mightily. But, but, but really him, him is your neighbor. Him is, him is sitting next to you tonight. Him is in your house. Him is that a brother and sister in Christ that, well, maybe you don't see every Sunday, but, but you know they have a need, and him, him is that. Him, him, is, him is a co-worker. It, it's, it's primarily here what we're talking about is, is the saved encouraging, but him is that co-worker. Him is that relative that isn't in your house. Him is that neighbor. Him, him. Encourage. Encourage. What do you mean? Inspire with hope. Inspire with inspire with confidence give some support encourage him god god he wasn't recommending to moses to encourage joshua you, you see he, he says clearly let's go back to deuteronomy encourage him in fact let's go to deuteronomy chapter 31 again uh, 31 not again but deuteronomy chapter 31 as we get to the end now so what happens is god speaks to moses and he says encourage him he says joshua is going to be your man and he says, Deuteronomy chapter 3, Moses pleads with him again, I'd like to go in. He says, let's not talk about any more of this. Joshua is your man. Joshua is going to do it. And then for the next 20-some chapters, he talks about the, the wanderings. He sings a song of victory coming up here. But, but notice Deuteronomy chapter number 31, and let's pick it up about verse number 3. Deuteronomy chapter 31 and verse number 3. And uh, well, Actually, let's go to verse number 1. And Moses went and spake these words unto all Israel. All right, so... So, so Moses now is addressing the children of Israel, and he said unto them, I'm 120 years old this day. So by the way, by the way, you get a little picture here of, of life. So, so Moses was the first 40 years, he's in Egypt. He's in Egypt, he's raised in Pharaoh's household, he's essentially the son of Pharaoh. And he takes matters into his hands, he slays the Egyptian, he looks this way and that way, and he buries him in the sand. He thought that was going to be great, they didn't think it was so great. The children of Israel didn't. And so he flees. He goes to the backside of the desert and he, 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 he you know, opens up the well. He meets a woman. They get married and he tends to his father-in-law's flock for 40 years. Learning, learning. Amongst other things about sheep. Because he's getting ready to lead the flock of God. Children of Israel. And then at 80... 80, 80, at 80, he begins this ministry that he's called to. I'm, I'm just telling you, times have changed. <laughs> I mean, they just, you got 40 and 80 and 120, and now it's probably closer to 25, 50, five <laughs> maybe maybe somewhere in there 30 30 60 30 60 70 well that puts some of you in the grave i don't know 30 60 80 you like that better i'm just saying it's just changed a little i'm just but but it gives you an insight there uh, uh just thinking thinking about a brother over there and when we were over in Linwood about a month or so ago, and Brother Dean Miller and his dad coming back up to Colorado at, I want to say he's in his early 70s, mid-70s, and, 
and not, not coming to sit, sit and rest, but coming to start a new church. I got tired thinking about that, and, you know, I'm not quite that, that old. And I'm just saying, though, Moses here is 120 years old. He says, my natural force is abating not. And uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm musing. Let me move on here. I can no more go out and come in. Verse 2, also the Lord hath said unto me, thou shalt not go over this Jordan. Mostly the Lord said unto me, thou shalt not go over this Jordan. <laughs> Verse 3. Now notice, the Lord thy God, he'll go over before thee, and he will destroy these nations from before thee, and thou shalt possess them. And Joshua, he shall go over before thee as the Lord hath said. So, so what he's doing is he is beginning now to follow the Lord's commandment to encourage Joshua. Verse 7, and uh, excuse me, verse 6, be strong and of a good courage, Fear not, nor be afraid of them, for the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Now verse 7, and Moses called unto Joshua and said unto him, in the sight of all Israel. Now, he, look, he wants to obey God. Be strong and of a good courage, for thou must go with this people unto the land which the Lord hath sworn unto their fathers to give them, and thou shalt cause them to, the, uh, to inherit it. And the Lord, he it is that doth go before thee, he will be with thee, he will not fail thee, neither forsake thee. Fear not, neither be thou dismayed. So I want to say to you, first of all, encourage him, and you encourage him, first of all, with words. Words of encouragement. Inspiring hope, inspiring confidence, inspiring courage, giving support. Words of encouragement. Joshua here is being encouraged by the man of God, Moses, as he's, if you would, passing that mantle onto him. Look at verse number 23. 23. Moses, therefore, uh, verse 23. 22, and Moses therefore wrote this song the same day and taught it the children of Israel. And he gave Joshua, the son of Nun, a charge and said, Be strong and of a good courage, for thou shalt bring the children of Israel into the land which I swear unto thee, and I will be with thee. He's saying, God's going to be with you. Go. So how do I encourage someone? I encourage them with words, words of encouragement. Just in case... The words of encouragement from Moses were not enough. God, God instills courage in Joshua himself as well. And he does it with words. Words. Look at Joshua chapter number one. You're just turning a couple pages over here. Joshua chapter number one. The baton has now been a pass. The Bible says in verse one, now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun. Here's that title, Moses minister, saying, Moses, my servant is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people into the land which I do give unto them, even to the children of Israel. Look down to verse number uh, six. Be strong. The Lord is saying to Joshua with words of encouragement, be strong and of a good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Verse 7, only be thou strong and very courageous. Verse number 9, have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of good courage. Verse number 18, Whosoever it be that he be that doth rebel against thy commandment and will not hearken unto thy words and all that thou commandest uh, him, he shall be put to death. Only be strong and of a good courage. Hey, Joshua, there's going to be a lot of oppositions. Only, only. There's, there's a lot of things that are going to be happening here, but only, only be strong and of good courage. Courage. We need courage. Why? Well, because the devil is against you, and the world's against you, and the flesh is against you, and they want to oppress you. And when they oppress you, they depress you, or discourage you, first of all. And the next step of discouragement is depression. <laughs> we talked about that this morning. And so what do we need to do? We need to be encouraged. And how do we be encouraged? Well, we encourage ourselves, and we learn to do that. But in the meantime, or sometimes before we get there, God uses people with words of encouragement. Hey, 
Hey, you can do this. Hey, come on, let's do this. Hey, God's with us. Let's do this. Only be thou strong and be very courageous or of good courage. So God uses Moses. God takes matters in his own hands and encourages them. And then, by the way, it continues. Look, if you would, to Joshua chapter number 23. It continues. And it continues. And it continues. And it continues. And it's to continue with you. Look at Joshua 23. Joshua now is uh, getting toward the the end of his life. Uh, Notice verse 1, it came to pass a long time after that the Lord had given rest unto Israel from all their enemies round about, that Joshua waxed old and stricken in age. He calls for the the elders. He admits it in verse number 2 at the end. He said unto them, I'm old and stricken in age. And he says down there in verse number 6 then, Be therefore very courageous to keep and do all that is written in the book of the law of Moses that you turn not aside therein, uh, therefrom, to the right hand or to the left. Well, there's going to be temptations. There's going to be a desire to just kind of shift a little bit. There's going to be a desire to mingle over here. There's going to be a desire to turn. But he says, look, be strong and courageous and look, look, do right. Do right. Look, We always need that. We've always needed that. Man has always needed that, but we still need it today, and you need some encouragement. Hey, I'm with you. I'm for you. Let's do this. Let's go. How do I I encourage him? I do it with words. I do it with words, words of encouragement. Look over to 2 Chronicles chapter number 15. Words. Words matter. By thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt contend. Death, uh, be condemned. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. The tongue, why? Well, it can be just this, this fire, uh, uh, matter of iniquity, and set on fire of hell, according to James. The tongue can. But at the same time, the tongue can be something that can be, oh boy, something that can build. And something that can a challenge, and something that can, if you would, inspire. And words of encouragement are necessary to encourage him. Second Chronicles chapter 15. There's a king here, Asa, but he's got a preacher. And the Bible says here in Second Chronicles chapter 15, and uh, verse number eight. I'm in Samuel, I apologize. Second Chronicles 15 and verse number eight. He says, you're an Asa, had an army of men that bear targets, and that's not it. Was oh, that it? Oh, yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And Asa had an army of men that bear targets and spears out of Judah, 300,000, and out of Benjamin that bear shields and drew bows. I'm in, the, I'm in 14. There, there you go. Whew. Seven, just because. Be strong, therefore, and let not your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. And when Asa heard these words and the prophecy of Oded the prophet, he took courage and put away the abominable idols out of all the land of Judah and Benjamin and out of the cities which he had taken from Mount Ephraim and renewed the altar of the Lord that was before the porch of the Lord, and so on and so forth. I'm just saying, well, your words can encourage And you need to encourage him. Encourage him, number one, with with words. Look over to Isaiah chapter number 41. Isaiah chapter 40. Encourage him with words. Why, there's a task at hand. There's a work to be done. Um, Just personal musings this week and ponderings of uh, of just work. What are we doing? What What are we doing at Heritage? What am I doing personally? Uh, to reach the lost, to get the gospel, to reach my community, uh, looking at the scriptures and, and you know, understanding the task at hand and the desire that the Lord has for it. What, what are we doing? Well, we're trying to do stuff, but it takes encouragement. It takes encouragement. Number one, encourage them with words. Look what he says in Isaiah chapter 41, and, and look at verse number six. The Bible says, uh, they helped every man. They helped every man. They helped everyone, his neighbor, and everyone said to his brother, be of good courage. So, so we encourage with words. How would I do that? Isaiah 41 says, look, hey, you're on the front row. So they get, hey, take courage. You know, got that, got that stuff ahead of you and got that stuff on your plate given to you last week and you can do it. 
Hey, take courage. Be, be of good courage. You know, we, it just it kind of seems a little Old Testament me when we read it that way. And we just kind of grab each other's arms and we don't, no, we don't do this. We do, be of good courage. That hurt a little bit? Yeah, I figured so. Anyway, you know, that, like we should have kilts on or something like that. Be of, be of, be of good courage. I, McGarry, right? We just have to say, Fred, just be of good courage. Hey, look, it's, it's New Testament. It's still today. Hey, hey, take courage. Your arm's going to be all right. Take, take courage. Be, be of good courage. And it just seems a little odd sometimes, but that's all it takes sometimes is just something that's just very simple. These guys helped one another. And they said one to another, be of good courage. I be of good courage. I mean, however they did it. You know, we were joking the other day when peace be with you and also with you. I mean, whatever it is, take courage. We do it with words. Number one, we do it with words. Number two, we do it with hands. We do it with our hands. This passage here, again, going back to verse number six. So they helped everyone his neighbor. That's a him. And everyone said to his brother, be of good courage. Verse seven. So the carpenter encouraged the goldsmith, and, and he that smootheth with the hammer him that smote the anvil, saying, it's, it's ready for the soldering, and he fastened it with nails that it should not be moved. Now, I'm, all the context that sometimes they're fashioning good, graven images, and you can get into that, and you can see that, but other times they're building a work for God. I think about, well, look over to Nehemiah. Look over to Nehemiah. Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs. If you get over there, you know, before Proverbs somewhere, Nehemiah. And Nehemiah, they're uh, rebuilding the wall here of Jerusalem. And um, there's a work to be done. And uh, look, look there at chapter number uh, 3. And we'll just, we'll just, we can pick it up, just verse 4. And if you get the gist, they're building. And he's, just, he's going from one wall or one gate to the next gate. Look at verse 4. And unto them, next unto them repaired Merimoth, the son of Uri, the son of Koz. And next unto them repaired that guy and the next guy and his son. And next unto them repaired Zadok, the son of Baana. But now notice verse 5. And next unto them the Tekoites repaired but their nobles put not their necks to the work of the Lord. So what is that? Well, they're not really doing anything. And sometimes not really doing anything is discouraging. There was a time when the tribe of Gad... Was it Reuben and the half-tribe of Manasseh? They're not going over Jordan. They saw the land over here, and it was some good herds, so we're not going to go. And, and Moses says to him, why sit ye here and your brethren be discouraged, essentially? You're not going to war. Now, they're going to go to the war, and they do go to the war, and it turned out all right, although they get the first, they're the first that goes into captivity. But just sometimes sitting and doing nothing is actually more than doing nothing. You're not putting your hand to the work, or if you would, your necks to the work, and you're discouraging. Well, well I, I mean, I'm a, I'm a noble. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're you're a, you got hands, hands to labor, and. Uh, God gave you those hands to labor. and God gave you those hands so you could be there repairing with the rest of the repairers or building with the rest of the builders. The work is great and large, and we need some help. And one way that you can encourage is with your hand. You can, you can, you can lend a hand. You can be a helping hand. Well, I mean, just, I'm, just a, I'm just a hired hand. We need hired hands. We need free hands. We need lending hands. We need helping hands. I see it all throughout the scriptures. Look at Romans chapter 16. Paul references these things. Romans chapter 16. I, I came to appreciate Romans 16. Oh, it's probably been three or four years ago when I was reading it. And just kind of really, it just kind of struck me that 
you know, Paul's really pouring his heart out here of thanksgiving to these folks. Romans chapter 16, and you can just read it as kind of a list of people, and you can kind of read over it sometimes almost like it's chronicles, but, but it's much more than that, and it's, I think it's even deeper than that. And he says in verse number uh, 1, I command unto you, Phoebe, our sister, which is a servant of the church, which is at Sancria, that you receive her in the Lord as becometh saints, and that ye assist her. That's, that's a helping hand. By the way, that's an encouragement. That ye assist her in whatsoever business she hath need of you, for she hath been a securer. That's another word for help, or a word that identifies help. Help with purpose is what they say securer has an indication. Of many and of myself also. Now notice, Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in Christ Jesus, who have for my life laid down their own necks. <laughs> the hand and the neck seems to be connected here. Unto whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. And by the way, hey, hey, Priscilla and Aquila, thank you. Today, thank, thanks for helping Paul. Why? So we could have these letters that, that God wanted us to have. Oh, that didn't mean much. They just, they just said, hey, you can help build us on the tent. And hey, why don't you take a day off and go help the church out? We'll, we'll, I think that went on. And then let's have church in our house. And this is Aquila and Priscilla. No, notice as we read on here in Romans chapter 16, look at verse number 9. Salute Urbane, our helper in Christ, and Stachys, my beloved. Just, just helpers. Helpers. And I think all these people in this chapter were were embarrassed when they had their names read because if you're just a helper you don't need you don't you don't need your you're flattered ah oh, thanks paul appreciate it but indelibly forever helpers are mentioned just just helpers look at another one look over to first corinthians chapter number 12 helpers so what does helping do encourages encourages let's just it's it's just setting some chairs up but ah, i'm sure they have enough help already for the tent uh, it's just it's just some trash it's just some grass it's just some dirt it's just it's not just it's not just it's just, not, it's not just. It's, it's all part of, it's part of the church and it's part of the body and it's part of the work. And it encourages, encourages. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 28, 27. Now, I love it. Now, 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 now ye are the body of Christ. Now ye are the body of Christ. Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular and God has set some in the church. First apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that, miracles, then gifts of healings. Notice, helps. Government, diversity of, of tongues. Now, so you go, you go well, well first, first apostles, they're the most important. Well, they were first. But the helps were in the list as well. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Just, just, it doesn't say here, but are all helps? All aren't helps. I think all could be helps, but not all are helps. And I'm just saying this, you can help. You can help. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter number, or 2 Corinthians chapter number 8. You can help. You got a part. Well, I want to be the apostle. Well, you're not. What do you think you are? I'm not. I'm not. I don't have a secret badge that I wear on days that aren't Sunday that says Apostle Tim. My business card does not say Apostle Tim. Well, I tell you what, I would be pleased if it just said helper. I'd rather be a doorkeeper. I don't be a doorkeeper. And to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Just, just want to be a help. We say that sometimes. I just want to be a help. 
Want to be a blessing? Want to be an encouragement? Well, then be one. Use your hands. Look what he says here in 2 Corinthians chapter number 8. Look at verse number uh, 23. He says, whether any do inquire of Titus, he's my partner and fellow helper concerning you and our brethren be inquired of. They are the messengers of the churches and the glory of Christ. I'm just saying this. Help. You can just, you can lend a hand. How, how can I, how can I encourage? How can I encourage so and so? You, you, could, you could give some encouraging words. Hey, take courage. Be of good courage. You could lend a hand. You could lend a hand. You could give. You could give. You, you could put some money in the plate, put some money in the offering, put some money in someone's hand. You could not put it in the offering plate. You could not do it on push pay. You could never put it in the plate, but you could just, you just give a, you could just give a handshake with a couple bucks in it. Or you can do all the above. So that encourages. Well, aren't you encouraged when you get one of those? Come on. Aren't you? Aren't you encouraged when it says happy birthday and there's $10 in it? Aren't you encouraged sometimes that you are 50 now and you've been getting $10 when you were 10 and 11 when you were 11 and 12 when you were 12 and you're 50. Your parents are still alive and so they send you a card and it's happy birthday and there's a 50. Russ. <laughs> just kidding. It's, you could give. Look at Second Chronicles. I have I have I mean I have a Bible verse to back that up. Second Corinthians chapter Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles chapter thirty one. Second Chronicles chapter thirty one. There's a great revival here going on under Hezekiah. And you see the same thing happen with Josiah. And the Bible says here in 2 Chronicles chapter 31, and let, let's just, let's get it to verse number 4. He commanded, moreover, he commanded the people that dwelt in Jerusalem to, to give the portion of the priests and the Levites, notice, that they might be encouraged of the law of the Lord. We won't take time to look at all the, the law here and the lawful um, idea behind that. It's in, it's in the, the, the law. Uh, I think you have part recorded in Numbers. And, uh, but, but he says, notice that they might be encouraged in the law of the Lord. Verse number five, and as soon as the commandment came abroad, the children of Israel brought in abundance the first fruits of, uh, of corn, of wine, of oil, and honey, and of all the increase of the field, and, and the tithe of all things brought they in abundantly. See, so, so it was in addition to the tithe, but, but they brought that in. And just, just what was it? It was an encouragement. So, so I didn't preach all this to say this, but I'll just say this because I'm preaching it. We're, we're going to have a bunch of preachers here. And look, this is not for me. This is not for me. I appreciate the, the salary that I receive from Heritage Baptist Church. You take care of me, and I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, not, not everybody gets the salary I get. and I haven't always got the salary I got. And uh, I go to other churches and preach. Um, and, uh, and I appreciate when they take care of me. And uh, usually I get a love offering. And, uh, th but th then sometimes on top of that, someone will come up to me and it's very humbling. And usually they fumble a little bit. You know, it just, it's just what it is. But, you know, somehow or another there's a crumpled up 20 or 50 or 100 and, you know, they'll be like, uh, yeah, just, you know. you know, you're not supposed to look at it or anything like that. You're just supposed to, you know, put it in your mouth. But you want to look at it. You know, as soon as you get away, you look at it. <laughs> you know, give that back to me. Ah, I don't want to be a blessing to you right now. You could do that. Say, well, how, how would I know? Well, you have the same spirit that I have, the spirit of God. And he'll lead you and he'll direct you. And if you do, just don't know, just drop, drop some put money in the plate when it comes by. And, and, and we'll try to get it to these guys. We want to give a, be a blessing to them. And here's what it does. It just, uh, it encourages them. Well, I go to Pastor Murphy's meeting every year. And uh, they, they've taken on a practice. 
um, of giving shoes. The Bible says, you got yours on today? He got, he got a pair. And how beautiful are the feet of them which preach the gospel of peace, and, and they just give a pair of shoes. Now, I don't know if he does this, but I, but I have a couple pairs of, of shoes that have come vicariously through them, and, and I look at those shoes, and it, I'm reminded of Open Door Baptist Church, and when I'm reminded of Open Door Baptist Church, I, well, Lord, thank you. Now, listen, listen. That's very valuable. That thanks are going to God, and, and, and God is going to bless. God blesses when you take care of the man of God. This Heritage Baptist Church, you need to know that. God blesses when you take care of the man of God. And we've seen that, and you will see that personally. And I'm just saying this, you want to be encouragement? You just, you just can, you can give. Now, here, here's what this is. You have words of encouragement, hands of encouragement, offerings of encouragement. Here's what this all equals. Your presence. Your presence. If, if I'm going to give you a word of encouragement, look, look, I know you can text it to me and I know you can email it to me and thank you. Thank you. Those are words of encouragement. But if you can be there, and, hey, be of good courage. That's better than a text. And it's better than any, especially if you could be there. See? And, and if I'm going to lend a helping hand to him, the best way I could do that is with my presence. Right? I mean, I can't buy osmosis. Nail the hammer that uh, hammer the nail that he needs hammered, or change the tire that he needs changed. Or got it? Presence, the offering. We can do it so many ways today: PayPal, Apple Pay, money, cash app, you name it. Right? But man, I'm telling you, there's just something about Benjamin Franklin's face. I read something, this points to ponder, I get a little email. He said, if you want to make people think uh, more about what you're saying, just say, Benjamin Franklin once said, and all of a sudden it just makes it sound more important. <laughs> but there's just something about, there's something about it. Come on, just, just is. I mean, even if you get a $100 check or a $100 cash, there's something different about it. You want to hold on to it a little bit. There's, there's so much about that. But I'm just saying it demands your presence. Look at one last scripture here, Acts 28, and I'll be done. Your presence. Your presence. Your personal presence. Oh, no one cares that I'm there. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Your presence is important. Acts 28. And look down here to verse number 14, the Apostle Paul, he's in straits here, and, and uh, uh, as usual. Um, we'll look at verse 13. From thence we fetched a compass and came to Rigium, and after one day the south wind blew, and we came the next day to Pudioli, where we found, verse 14, brethren, and we were, and were desired to tarry with them seven days, and so we went toward Rome. Now, notice verse 15 now. And from thence, when the brethren heard of us, they came to meet us as far as Appi Forum and the three taverns whom, notice, whom when Paul saw, he thanked God and took courage. The brethren came, verse 15, uh, when they heard, they came, and when Paul saw, he thanked God and took courage. I just said, what is that? Well, it was one thing to say, hey, Paul, we're for you and we're with you and we're praying for you and all those things are good. But it's a whole other ball game when the brethren show up at your front door. Just wanted to say, hey, we're for you. We're praying for you. We love you. Hey, take courage. Hey, Paul's, Paul's going to lose his neck here real shortly. Lose his head. Hey. Hey, Paul, cheer up. We'll all soon be dead. You know, we're, we're, we're going to be with the Lord. There was just some, but it took some presence. Your presence. Your presence. Right now. Right, right now. 
Your presence is an encouragement. Your presence is an encouragement. Oh yeah, your words are encouragement. Your hands are an encouragement. They are your helping hands. Uh, uh, they're an encouragement. And uh, your presence, though, is utmost encouraging. And I want to say one more time, encourage him. Who's him? Well, he can be your leader. He can be your boss. But most of all, it's your neighbor. Encourage him. Yes, we should learn how to take courage ourselves. But boy, it sure is nice when someone is encouraging you in a distressing, indebting, discouraging, depressing time. Let's pray. Father, thank you again for the, the encouragement that you give. But Lord, I want to say thank you for the brethren that you use to encourage us in, in so many ways. And Lord, might we just take heed to the scriptures here tonight? Just some simple thoughts. Lord, how, how could we encourage someone uh, with some words? Lord, may we with our words exhort the brethren, encourage the brethren, encourage him. Uh, Lord, with our hands, Lord, just might we lend a hand. Uh, Lord, with our giving, uh, we'll have an opportunity to do it next week. But Lord, we have an opportunity all the time. And, and Lord, if we can, we can. If we can't, we can't. But when we can, help us too. And then Lord, lastly, Lord, just with our presence. And all these equal our presence. And Lord, may we be faithful in that matter to be encouraging one another. And uh, Lord, thank you again. <clears throat> for in a distressing, a depressing, discouraging time, encouragement. And help us to be that encourager. We love you, Lord. And uh, we ask as we go out tonight uh, for some safety. Lord, as we stick around a bit in fellowship with one another, Lord, may it be words of encouragement and exhortation, pleasing to you. And uh, Lord, just want to say again, thank you for loving us. We love you. Pray this in Jesus' name, believing. Amen. Amen. All right, Wednesday night at 6.30, encourage you to come out, pray, and drop your kids off if you got them, and come up here and pray, and then 7 o'clock Bible study.